Welcome to Finacon channel. This screencast is about fee calculation and analysis. In the first part, you will see how to calculate all sorts of fees for different share classes of a mutual fund. This is the fabulous fee calculator. In the second part, you will see how to evaluate the best share class to invest in, considering factors like investment amount, investment horizon and expected fund returns. This is the fabulous fee calculator. On the left you see all inputs and on the right you see all output parameters. Let me shortly introduce some of these input and output parameters. Front end load is a one-time subscription fee typically with volume discounts as seen in its corresponding matrix parameter. In the matrix parameter, first column contains the percentages to be applied and second column the ranges for investment amounts. For example, the first row says apply 5% for investment amounts from 0 to 50,000. And the second row says apply 4.5% for investment amounts from 50,000 to 100,000. Backend load is a one time redemption fee, typically with diminishing percentages for subsequent years. This vector parameter means charge 5% if the shares are sold within the first year. Charge 4% if the shares are sold within the second year and so on. Annual distribution fee is simple. In our case here, it is 0.5% for every year. These three parameters, front-end load, back-end load and distribution fee, they are all related with the distribution of a fund's share and they will be important for our analysis of share classes in the second part. Management fee rates with volume discounts. The logic of volume discounts is similar to front end load above, but the fee rates are given in basis points instead of percentages. I will skip the following four parameters to save time. You can find information about them in the related article. 5% is the expected fund return for future periods. In our example case here, we assume that a period is a year. Initial share price times the number of shares purchased is the initial investment of the shareholder. In our example case here, it is 50,000 Swiss francs or dollars or whatever currency you want. 10 years is the investment horizon. Time interval between the subscription and redemption of shares. In terms of fees, investment horizon is significant for backend load. In our example case here, you need to pay a redemption fee if you sell your shares within five years of your purchase. On the output side, we have first the result matrix. As its name implies, it's a matrix including all fee types and intermediate results for each year. As I will show you soon, the downloadable MATLAB or R scripts for fee calculation can store these results in an Excel file for your convenience. Net fund returns after all bunch of fees for each year. Net asset value after all fees at each year end and the final asset value at the end of the investment horizon in our case after 10 years total return achieved at the end of the investment horizon this is the key indicator we will use to compare the performances of different share classes average annual return given so that you can compare the funds return with the compounded interest rate of a simple saving account can you now guess the total return after 10 years with all these given parameters? Expected return 5% and all other fee rates. Is it 20% or 
or 30% or more. Actually, you don't need to guess. You just need to run the calculation. It is 35%. The net return is a negative number, minus 1.6% in the first year due to the front-end load. And beginning from the second year, it is 3.6%. This is roughly equal to 5% the expected fund return minus sum of all uh, annual fees. The net asset value at the end of the first year is less than the initial investment, 50,000. Again, due to the front-end load. The loss is recovered in the second year. Your final asset value. You invested initially 50,000 and at the end of 10 years you have 67,000. You could have achieved the same investment performance by investing in a simple saving account with this annual interest rate, about 3%. Let's make some experiments with this calculation model. Total return increases to almost 43% without front-end load. What happens if we increase the investment amount from 50,000 to 100,000? Let's see now what happens if we increase the investment horizon from 10 to 20 years. You see, total return 108%. Now I will vary the investment horizon from 1 to 10 years and see how the total return behaves. This is the result. As we change the investment horizon from 1 to 10 years, the total return changes from about minus 5 to almost 40%.